just so you know, it's not gonna get any easier. <laughs> when did it ever? and straight on to Reactor 5. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> Only because it is. That there's the reactor support pillar. So what's the plan? After plan E comes F, G, and then H. <sighs> Thought E was the last. <laughs> this here is Section F. We cut through Section G and head for H. A cargo platform in H will get us closer to the reactor. Biggs should be somewhere over there. Looks like the sun's going down on Midgar. Right. Double time. We got a date with the reactor. <laughs> Just a fair warning here, but this one is going to be about 48 minutes long because this is a long dungeon and I did not know how to get through it. So, just to give you a bit of a warning. Hey, a vending machine. That's convenient. The ladder. It's a little less convenient. <laughs> Nothing but air below us. Shut up and move. Just don't look down, okay? Easy for you to say. This section of the game is a prime example of the developers of the remake taking what was a very short section of the original game and really blowing it up into something that was much, uh, into something which is much, much larger than it originally was. There was a scene in the original game after Cloud had escaped through the passageway on the side of one of the subway tunnels, he passed into this small, um, relatively confined space. It looked to me like it was just some sort of a weird hallway. And there was a couple of these screens, and you found Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse the in there. This is now that the is probably what this is supposed to be based on. But instead of being a 48 minute romp through this area suspended over top of the Undercity, you have <laughs> a little scene which really only took like a few seconds to get through maybe a couple of minutes if you chose to talk to the characters and and seek out all the treasure chests and stuff it was really nothing like what we're playing here not gonna say that's bad though i want to comment a little bit more to it as soon as we get back out here maybe the gate didn't budge because there's not enough power to spare gotta figure this out power. Of course. Hey guys, look at this. Instructions for dealing with a power shortage. Kill the lights, and we free up power for the gate and other stuff. Sun lamps. You think these are the plate suns? The closest thing we have to the real thing. Gotta put out a sun just to open a gate, huh? But if we go through with it, the grounders in Sector 4 will suffer. Now or later. Sun's going out for good when we blow the reactor. That's true. Let's go. All these lamps. You'd think they'd be able to balance the loot by now, though. Maybe. If the maintenance guys or whoever weren't playing hook. The lamps are important, but when you think how much Mako it must take to keep them running... That's gotta be one. Man, look at the size of it. That a console I see near the top of that ladder? A, uh, pretty tall ladder, too. I'll go. Okay, we'll wait down here. Emergency power supply confirmed. Disengaging locking mechanisms. Okay, that's that. <laughs> Great job, Cloud. Hmm. 
Next stop, Section G. Yep. And after that, Reactor 5. <sighs> Not again. Great. I'm sure those things will welcome us just as warmly as before. <laughs> Tell you what, the rot runs deep in this damn pizza. I wonder why these monsters are here. It's not like we're actually close to the Mako reactor right now. Are these kinds of things just infesting the city and all the areas where people tend not to go? I guess this kind of thing... Well, I mean, the, the slums... There's a lot of talk about how monsters tend to invade or sneak their way in and they're a constant problem for people who live in the slum. And I guess it would have been a problem for the people living on the plate also if it weren't for the fact that that seems to be an area that Shinra cares about. And the guards tend to do a much better job keeping the threat down. They don't really care about the slums. They don't care so much about the subway tunnels because people don't walk through them and they don't care about this because people don't go here either. They busted? Powered down is my guess. Lucky us, am I right? One less thing for us to worry about. We gotta breathe with this shit. Monsters sure seem to like it. What's up with that? It's like in the tunnels. They get twisted by the Mako, but it all goes back to shit. I had talked before about how this game gives you a much better perspective or a much larger perspective of the size of Midgar compared to the original game. In the original game, you got to view Midgar pretty much the one time through uh, that shot in the beginning, that pre-rendered shot where it focused on Eris and then it backed out to a view of the city and then it kept, came back in and you got to see the beginning of the assault on the first Mako reactor. You got to see it in this game also, but the city was expanded and the city was much larger in this game. But you really don't get an idea on how big it really is until you get a chance to get a more detailed view of everything here. Whoa, holy shit. You okay? Yeah. Ah, going for that material, weren't you? So close, and yet so far. <sighs> this path's no good now. I'm sure there's another way to get there. Hmm. Nothing we can do but search. If we can find it, we can find the snag that material. <laughs> I've seen Cloud make bigger jumps than that. This is bullshit. You can see all the different sectors of the slums. Now we're only looking at the slums when we're when you're up here, because we're just underneath of the plate. Just underneath of the kind of the high town where all of the uh, upper class people live. You're looking down and you're seeing the slums down there, and it, it looks huge. I mean, all the buildings are really... It, it, the slums are mostly a kind of a shanty town, a really big shanty town. But it's extending out really far, and the density of the buildings, they look like they're like right up against each other. It's no wonder that there's so much crime and all that down in the slums, considering that the population density and the poverty that's going on down there. You know the best way to not get lost is to believe that you're not. Mind over matter. Isn't that from one of Marlene's books? Yep, one of her favorites. Loves it when I read it to her before bedtime. Doing all the voices. Life in the endless maze. Am I right? <laughs> I remember. Oh, that reminds me of a something. I once went on a business trip in order to straighten another location in the company I work uh, for the company I work at, and we all decided we were going to go and head out for fried chicken. There was this uh, fried chicken place that was supposed to be very good, 
None of us lived in the area, though, so we didn't know how to find it. But we had heard, like, oh, it's off in that direction and all that. So instead of... So instead of using a GPS on our phones that we all had in our pockets, we decided to just wing it. What do you know? We got lost. Go figure. Hey, let's take a moment to get our bearings. We're still in G, right? Yeah, and to reach Mako Reactor 5, we need to go through Section H. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't spot a connecting catwalk to Section H, did you? Well, we could always do another lap. Go for ten, why don't you? The only other route that I can think of would be... Along the wall. Up for giving it a try? It might not work out, but it's the only idea I've got. <clears throat> it's not a bad one. So we're shooting for those giant fans way over there? Okay, at least we've got a clear landmark to guide us. Those ventilation fans? Keeping the plates air clean by pushing the smog into the slums. Whole system's designed to make shit roll downhill faster. I would suspect that the scale of the city that we're seeing underneath of, uh, from the perspective that we have here, isn't proportionally correct to the view that we had seen the city from above. Not that I would expect them to pay so much attention to the development of this game and the graphics and all that kind of stuff, that that kind of thing is strictly necessary. What I'm saying is we're, well, we're probably looking at the city from above, it's actually larger. Well, we're looking at the city from the view that we have now, looking at the slums. It's probably larger than the city that we had seen when we had viewed it in the beginning in the opening cinematic. Then again, I believe uh, Midgar is actually larger in the slums than it is up on the plate. There's, you know, I never quite understood it, but there's some part of Midgar, and this is mostly in the original game you could see it more obviously but you had the central area up on the plate and then it has this sort of like area where it rises up and then extends out a ways further but it's pretty much featureless it's flat like it's sheet metal just bolted onto the frame and it extends out quite a ways further and I imagine the slums were beneath that although I don't know what that part of the city is for it seemed to have been there Hey, look! I think we can climb onto that pipe. Sure seems that way. Damn it. No fear, no fear. Yeah, no fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. Little fear. Hey guys, uh, you know, these fans are really loud and... You chickening out? Hell no! I'm just worried that your bony ass is gonna get blown off the side and shit! Enough! We gotta keep moving! Okay then! Follow me! <laughs> no worse than a windy day, huh? One with a tornado warning, maybe? Don't look at the fan! Whatever you do! Right! Maybe three times. 
Section H is just up ahead. Slow and steady, guys. Then that's our objective? The cargo platform? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one. This is it. The cargo platform Biggs was talking about. Let's not keep him waiting. Error. Insufficient power. You're kidding me. Needs three lights worth, looks like. But that's... That's all of them, isn't it? All or nothing. Let's regroup here if we get lost. Remember the H1 sign. Right. Let's see now. Closest light ought to be... That one. By the light of these magnificent lamps, we shall lead our brothers and sisters of the Undercity to a brighter future. Say what? It's from a speech President Shinra gave, talking up the importance of the sun lamps. <laughs> Right of future, my ass. Shinra's leading us down a one-way path to darkness and death. This whole thing here, with the lights having to turn off, is an entirely new creation for this game. There was nothing like this in the original, in the original game. Remember that the original game only. What is a truck up here? Holy shit! The original game, this part was only took a few seconds to get through. They stretched it out to like an hour long hour-long endeavor so I mean it does add a little bit of a puzzle to it it was a bit frustrating because I didn't know how to get through and this all of these uh, platforms that were crawling across look the same you got to pay more attention to items to objects that are off in the distance which I wasn't doing for a little while really just watch the lights yeah, they want uh, Tifa says to look at the, look at the signs I, was, I ended up looking at the light since I figured my way through. But this adds a little bit of a puzzle to it. We have to go and shut the lights off in order to power up the elevators and the catwalks and all that kind of stuff that we need to get through to the other side. Now Tifa mentions that, like, well, that's gonna, that's just gonna hurt the people in the slums. But Bear points out, like, well, we're going to blow up the reactor that powers them anyway. So eventually, they're going to go dark. Although, I mean, it, it seems a little strange that Midgar had, what, seven, eight reactors? Like, did, do you really need that many? Let's flip it and go. And there don't seem to be... The, the lights don't seem to go out as far as the city goes once we shut these off. Rerouting power. Please wait. That's one down. Only two more lights to go. Reinitializing intrusion prevention system. Intrusion prevention? Back online because of us. <laughs> no need to fret, y'all. A few rusty mechs ain't gonna keep us from reaching the reactor. Well, kick the hornet's nest there. Once we shut the light off, that provided some power for the mechs and the turret guns and all those kinds of things to um, power up. And now they're going to try and kill us as soon as we get out here. Because, of course, they are. It is a little irritating. I mean, I guess they had to find some way of making certain characters better in certain now these sentry rays, even though Cloud and Tifa are capable of jumping in the air and attacking airborne enemies, they're not capable of attacking these for some reason. You could use magic, but their physical attacks don't work. So that's where Barrett comes Nothing to it. Just made our lives a lot harder. We restored power to more than just security, remember? We can move this catwalk. Yeah! Lined it up perfect!
Which way to the next life? If we can't make sense of this place, we're gonna get lost. Well, at least we know where the big ass things are. I may have mentioned this before, but in the original game, it was my impression that a lot of the problems that come to the people living in the slums not necessarily come from the fact that everything is polluted or that the Mako reactors are draining the environment dry and so plants and stuff can't live. But because the plate is like just physically sitting over their heads, that blocks out sunlight so people never actually get to see the sun. But they, I would, I assume, and now it's being verified in this game, that there was some kind of uh, a lighting system on the underside of the plate, which where everybody, uh, where, where everybody gets the light. That also gave me the impression, in the original game anyway, that there was never really any such thing as nighttime for the people in the slums. It was always some kind of... It, I had always perceived it, although it didn't quite look like this. Sort of kind of did, but it didn't really look like it. My perception was the underside, the slums of Midgar, always kind of felt like a well-lit parking lot at night. With a bunch of lights in the parking in a good parking lot, and it's easy enough to see, but the light's unnatural. The light is a little bit dimmer than is comfortable, and uh, kind of like a dismal state to live your entire life. In. The people stuck on the other side of the, uh, in the slums would have to live with that. But in this game, we've seen nighttime happen, where clouds wandering around in the slums and everything is darker it comes it's not like truly dark and i don't know if that's supposed to, supposed to be like an artistic choice or because if it was really dark you wouldn't be able to see but there was always some kind of a light but it did seem to get night for the people in the slums and then daytime comes and you could see sun filtering in between the the areas between the between the sector plates and I guess from the edge of Midgar, where there's no plate overhead, sun was coming in. But there is nighttime for them. And that makes two lights down. Meaning we've only got one left. The end's in sight, y'all. Should be able to climb down from here. Uh, this a hole, right? That the Sector 4 slums down there? Huh? You want to check them out sometime? I can show you around. We'll check them out now if we fall. Power's on. You think they'll miss those three plate suns? I say the real sun's the only one we need. To hell with Shinra and their night lights. Now I wonder if the fact that there is nighttime for the people in the slums is because Shinra actually makes a decision to go and shut down the, the sun lamps or whatever. Oh, it's broken. Shut down the sun lamps at, at a certain hour just to give the people a sort of uh, darkness. I've worked night shifts in my life, and I mean like true night shifts, not somebody who starts work at, at 2 p.m. or something like that. I mean starting work at like 9 p.m. working through the middle of the night. And trying to sleep during the day, and by the day I mean literally when the sun is out, is actually a surprisingly difficult thing, and it's something I never really actually got used to. My sleep was always interrupted. I, if sleeping during the day, I would only manage to get like three hours of sleep. And I didn't realize how bad my sleeping was until I got a Fitbit, which would track sleep, and I realized, oh shit. I'm only getting like a few hours of sleep a, a night, like three hours of sleep. Then eventually that would started. fuck me up so bad that I'd get to a day off and I'd go to sleep and I'd sleep for like 12 hours or something, trying just to, my body had to catch up with the lack of sleep. 
I can imagine an entire city which never actually got to see nighttime would be just immensely fucked up. And maybe maybe that's the reason why I've I've thought about Midgar in the original game as never having nighttime for the people in the slums. Only because it would be a really fucked up thing to put them through. Yeah. Oh well. Think back. Anybody see a connecting catwalk? I guess these little catwalk mini games are a nice little distraction to break up the tedium of just running around on these catwalks and fighting these weird seahorse monsters. But it does seem a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, I could you could have just had the damn catwalk there. And I could have just run to the other side. You didn't have to make me control of the damn thing to get it in the place. There's another thing I've always wondered that I never got an answer for. Perhaps if I do some more digging in like the secondary games, which I didn't really play much. But I wonder how old Midgar is, or I wonder how long it's been there. The impression I had gotten was that Midgar had been constructed fairly recently, as far as, like, the age of cities. I mean, like, constructed within the last 50 years or so. I shouldn't really expect any kind of realistic time frame or realistic sense of construction or anything like that in a game like this. Because, I mean, look at this. It, this, is, this is outright ridiculous. This is not something that could exist in the real world. It, it is just flat-out ridiculous. But this place is huge, and if you happen to think about it that way, in a sort of a realistic way, this kind of thing would take a long time to build. I do have questions as to why it exists. Like, why the hell did they build a city on a plate over top of a, another bunch of towns beneath? But if you ignore the question why, he asked a question, how long did it take? It must have taken a while. I don't know. Oh, man. That was a long way to slide, Cloud. <laughs> These areas we're wandering around in particular seem to be old enough to have the feeling of being neglected. Like, this place was built, like, years and years ago, and there wasn't really any effort put into maintaining the area, which is why the catwalks are falling down, which is why, I don't know, I guess nobody would ever go here if, unless something went wrong. Which would also be a reasonable reason as to why we're not encountering any guards or anything here. Only a bunch of automated security systems which weren't even functioning until we started reducing the power used by the spotlights. It's just an old, nearly forgotten area in Shinra's construction history that nobody really cares about anymore unless they have to. Which I guess is also the reason why there are so many of these monsters around here. It's just where no one goes. I used my phone to translate that sign right there, and it says, We create safety and trust. Shinra Corporation. And it's weird that they have uh, their weird propaganda posters up in a location like this, but I guess they do have to post some of these kinds of things for the sake of their own employees. There is an area. Oh, well, here's we have two more lights we have to turn off, it looks like. All right, we only need to power down one more sunlamp. There is an area over here that we can go and access. Now remember that materia that was that was behind the fan. Well, what do you know? Here's where we need to find here where we get at it. Where could they be going? Embarking on an adventure to find some treasure.
Ventilation system service mode active. Access maintenance terminal to complete procedure. We stop it? Switching ventilation system to maintenance mode. Please complete the maintenance access procedure within the designated time limit. Man, what are we even doing? Alright, this is something I had to try twice because I fucked it up the first time. You go in here and you fight these monsters. And you have to defeat them before time runs out. And then once you defeat them, there's a control panel you need to activate in order to um, open a door on the other side of the room where you can access the materia that was hidden behind the fan. I was unable to do this before because I was being too stupid about not using magic. Turns out there's a bench out there, so you get to restore your mana. Access granted. Disengaging time lock. Okay. What? This is summoning material. Wow. What kind of badass will pop out of this one? We'll see. We already picked up one summon materia. We got Ifrit and and Cloud is using that one. But we got Chocobo and Moogle materia, a summon which, even though I played a little further into the game, I've yet to see actually be summoned. I wonder if I ever will. <laughs> but anyway. You can actually reactivate this and fight these monsters as many times as you want. In fact, I did put the camera off a few times in order to gain, to grind out some experience and like SP and stuff. I also at this point finally decided to go and use these things to upgrade my character's weapons which is something I was avoiding doing earlier. Now, I proceeded into this game for quite a while under the false assumption that the SP, which is like the... I guess it's SP, yeah, it's SP. I don't know what that means. But it's essentially the experience points you develop for your weapons. Now, I figured it was kind of something like the system used in Final Fantasy XIII, where the individual weapons would upgrade and you used sort of like a common pool of items, or in this case, points, to upgrade the weapons. So, okay. If I were to go and spend my SP upgrading my Buster Sword, I wouldn't be able to upgrade the Iron Sword. So I was holding off on doing any of the upgrades because I believed that I didn't want to waste the SP on one of the lower level weapons. I knew I was going to be picking up a new weapon later on, and... I didn't want to waste the SP on something so low level, and I realized that the beginning of the game was going to be easy enough that it wasn't necessary to upgrade the base weapons. Turns out that is absolutely wrong. SP is, is accumulated for every weapon individually. So let's say I have 50 SP for the Buster Sword, that also means that I have 50 SP for the Iron Sword, or Tifa's Gloves, or Barrett's Guns. It's all just there, and each one has its own individual pool. I can upgrade everything without having to worry about that stuff. This also had the negative effect of making earlier parts of the game, like the parts up until this point, more difficult than they really had to be. Because even though no individual upgrade for your weapon is a true game changer, except for maybe some of the ones that increasing materia slots. If you get like six or seven upgrades linked together, your weapons get substantially more powerful. I probably should have done it earlier. Nope, sorry for the yawn. I could delete that. And I have time. And I'm editing these. But I'm not gonna do it. Because I'm a lazy asshole. Okay, I need to get two more lights and it's about time that I quit fucking around and go do it. Now, something, even though this episode is like 48 minutes long, 
I've decided that like it actually was going to be longer. Almost done. It's a shame we had to wander around so much. Well, no stamps here to guide us. No Jesse or Wes to back us up neither. Yeah. Speaking of which, what should we tell Biggs? I don't want him to worry. It actually was about 10 minutes longer, but you saw that weird jump cut there. It's because those 10 minutes were spent with me just wandering around like a moron. Off in the areas I'd already been looking for some sort of a passageway or a switch or something like that that I had failed to notice. Turns out I'm just being an idiot and I am not bothering to go and look off in the objects off just passed right through Tifa there. Not bothering to go and look off into the distance to the landmarks to realize, oh shit, I hadn't been there before. Oh shit, there's a light right in front of me that I haven't shut off before. That's where I need to go. Hmm. I didn't bother doing any of that. So, here we are. If there's no viable path, we'll just have to make one. Another one of these catwalk puzzles. Not really even a puzzle. The only reason why I don't like this kind of thing is even though it does break up the tedium of the combat a little bit, it is kind of unnecessary and it doesn't add any additional challenge. All it is is you moving the catwalk and then, like, okay, now I can walk through it. Hmm. I hate these damn things. Because they, once they start spinning, attacking them, you don't barely do any damage to them once they're spinning. And you have to um, use magic on them or something like that. Oh, staggered him though, so that's good. This fight didn't turn out that bad. <laughs> Dead. If you hear it sound a little strange with my voice, like everything kicks in kind of fast, it's because I'm using a new recording setup. Well, I'm I'm recording this commentary post gameplay, of course, or else I wouldn't have been able to cut all that stuff out. But I'm using um, Nvidia's RTX voice, which is sort of an AI background noise em eliminator. Because I'm next to a heater, and it makes a lot of noise. And that makes three. Enough to finally get our cargo platform moving. Better be. Okay, let's head on back to the H1 sign. I hope that Jesse's injury isn't anything serious. The best thing you can do to speed her recovery is to kick Shinra ass in her stead. I know, I know. And Cloud's got a cover for Wedge, too. It actually works pretty good at eliminating background noise. You'd hear a lot of unnecessary crap if it didn't. But if you make it, if you get too aggressive with the way it works, it tends to, like, slice off the end of whatever words or sentences you're using, as well as make the, add a little bit of a static sound to the beginning of every sentence. I guess I could cut this out. Alright, we have gotten all of the lights. Now we just need to head back and activate that one last platform to bring us over to the other side. You know, there was nothing even here. Like, they had this whole extra platform on this side, and there was nothing here to even get. No secret items, not even a box to destroy, nothing. You think that was just an oversight? I'm going to guess it was an oversight. Anyway, we got all of our lights. We need to head back over to number one, which is not down that ladder. When do we link up with Biggs? Soon enough. Don't you worry. He knew we might be late, so he came up with a few ways to kill time. We ought to reach him long before he dies aboard. Back at the cargo platform. Get ready, Marco Reactor 5. We're coming. 
I anticipate some kind of a boss fight here. So I went back over to this platform on the other side in order to rest on the bench. And then head back down. And get to the other side. Auxiliary power supply confirmed. Reactivating cargo platform. Cargo platform activated. Awaiting input. <laughs> so long, underplate. I hate you too. Wonder what the reactor's like. Dumb. Dismal. A slaughterhouse where they put to the planet. Then there's the smell. The Mako. Be ready for it. Right. Hear that, guys? It's the reactor colonists. Back in the nut saying, bring it on, Avalanche. Alright, we're in the other side. And we're pretty much at the end of this section of the dungeon, or the second sub-dungeon in this dungeon group. And we have, I guess, what you would call a mini-boss-like situation. There's no new powerful enemy here that we have to fight. It's just a large group of the kind of regular enemies that we've been fighting up until this point. But I guess if you group enough of them together at once, you sort of get a mini-boss-ish kind of situation. Which I guess is a pretty reasonable solution for this kind of a problem. You want to have some kind of a boss battle, but they don't want to have to develop all the time, use all the time to create a... create a new type of enemy to just have really only for one fight. So just... Here we go. Go stick a bunch of regular enemies in here and fight them off. Jeez, I am not doing well. <laughs> Just use your damn lightning against these things. Because there's really nothing special about this fight. I'm just going to speed up time and get through it quicker. The mistake I made here was, for no good reason, I was trying to preserve MP. Had I been smart, I just would have done a little bit of damage in order to build up the gauge and then cast lightning magic. Okay, Big should be waiting for us up ahead. He's probably worried sick about us. I don't know, you'd think to be some kind of a way of informing Biggs about the changes in the plan. Like a cell phone or something. I mean, not that these... Avalanche idiots are particularly good at maintaining a low profile. A phone call isn't going to kill you, considering all the other shit you've been doing so far. By the way, Shinra knows you're here. Even after all that fighting, no one's coming for us? No need. This is Shinra City. We probably have cameras everywhere. Why didn't you say something sooner? Way too late to bail now. It's like walking a tightrope. When you're on it, only two ways off. <sighs> Better keep my balance. Huh. You'd be good at it. <laughs> I wonder. Jeez, even Cloud knows that they're watching him. And he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> oh. Alright, there's no logic there. Whatever.
Mercy! Wait, a cloud? <sighs> Where's Jesse and Wedge? Report. Topside's going nuts after some terrorists jumped off a train. Nice and quiet here, though. So quiet I had no trouble securing your route into the reactor. You magnificent son of a bitch! Bring it in! So, where are Come the others? On, man. Jesse got hurt and couldn't make it. Bad? Not so bad she couldn't rope in this guy. <sighs> Thanks for stepping up. It's a job. Worked out pretty good. You picking that train you did. While Shinra scours Sector 4, you can waltz right on into Sector 5. It's a bit of a squeeze, but it ought to get you where you need to go. Little dark and foreboding for my taste. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, and you'll be needing your grappling guns, of course. All set? Ready to take on the world and then some. Make sure everyone gets clear, okay? Will do. Keep these grappling guns close. <sighs> Secure them to your belt or whatever so you don't lose them. When we're done, we'll be using these babies to get down safe. All of us. Got it. Hmm. <laughs> Reeks of Marco. Looks like we made it. <laughs>